Hello folks and welcome back to Court Farms. It's been a while since I've last been on, about a week or so. But anyway, let's get back into it and we've got to do a few things. For one, we've got to start ripping up the grass fields, prepare for the field beans. But one thing we're going to do quickly is just go and move some of these bells over here out of the way. So, this is why I've got the front loader on the Massey. I'm just going to move these out of the way. Just tie them up a little bit. There we go. So three bells. That would do it. So I think we'll just whack in here. There we go. Just tie them up a little bit. Tie them up. Yeah, what we're gonna do is apologies there, phone call. So yeah, as I was saying, we'll get these all moved, just have a bit of a better storage area for them and oh god. Don't don't do that please. Just cooperate. Yeah, this is why we shouldn't have these bells like this in storage. Cause it's gonna do that, alright. Phase it through the ground. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's not going to plan. Uh, well, bear with me a sec. Whilst I get it sorted. So, there we go. We've gone and bought this little loader trailer, and I thought. Didn't sort it for this very reason, just like transport bells here and there. Especially around the farm, and when we do like the TMR mixing in the future, we can just, you know, whack some bells on, have it stored up, and then just grab them and go as and when we need them. So, yeah, that is 65,000 litres of hay. And I don't think our sheep need any. So, if we have a little look here, oh, yeah, done that cultivation contract. Uh, nothing else popped up. Well, they could do some more hay, but in fairness, not a lot. Trophy can work and put some way in storage. That won't get wet, because rain is forecast, as you see on that top right corner. That's too small. Ah, what about the main sheds? So we uh, let's put in this one here. So we play in space in here. And what about free height all fit? Oh, just about. So from what? We'll just whack it here for now. There we go. We did say about pre applying the weeds because if we have a look here, we don't have weeds growing yet. So let's go and yeah, I want to see if it's actually worth doing with prevent the grown up weeds. I have no idea here whatsoever, so let's go grab that. go get all hooked up and just back out of here bingo see how with these fields the wheat fields we planted in this episode so if we look at the we can see 56 has been done 55 7 9 and 109 a still need that second application and in fairness, they that can wait a while, so... 56 now, if we go this way... 
I'll get access to 56 and then we'll just loop around to 55 and so on and so forth. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough herbicide. Actually, do we have storage for it in one of these tanks here? Yes, we do. Overload. Want to fit up? Yeah, seven and a half thousand liters. And it's not letting me fit it up, so that's nice. Yeah, it says L3 started to fill and <coughs> we're getting nothing so it's not the front tank it is the rear tank so perhaps if we detach that uh, covers open all right uh, must be a weird thing there but and you. Let's just change the width to 21 meters. Yeah, crash into the trader that's right in front of us. Ah, that's a good way of sucking things off, so yeah. I think the main thing today is going to be ripping out the loose grass fields, but the application of herbicide is important. That'd be a good test for us as well, so obviously we won't know straight away, we'll have to wait a while. Let's put the lights on. We'll open this up. And yeah, I'm just hoping one, we don't use too much herbicide. Yeah, we've got a tank full, but So we're starting to apply. It's going down. If we stop here, have a look. Needs rolling. Hmm. What did we say about rolling? They all need rolling. Dang it. So they need rolling as well. Bugger me. Oh, get that done in this episode if we can. If not, we'll do it in the next episode when we're still in November. But anyways, we're going to gamble with this. This may work, this may not work, so... Anyways, I'll see you folks when we're done, and... We'll be for a while yet before we figure out whether or not this is worth it or not.
And there we go, finishing off not the herbicide work of Yeah, so I'd give that up just simple reasons because I think don't think it actually does work. Pretty sure it doesn't, but and what sort of semi reinforced that was the lack of ability to get a worker, AI worker to do this, so that's why we decided to abandon that. By the way, that is all the fields for release now. Obviously, the grass meadow can't be fertilized because that is just a grass meadow, not a field. So we have a look here, fertilized. Boom, boom, boom. All done. A little strip over here, but apart from that, not too bad. Technically, we could go cheeky, apply fertilizer on this, but we won't, unlike what we did. Over there, so. But yeah, now, so let's go and get the cultivator and start ripping all this grass up. Also, been thinking about obviously with this field here, there's not many access points, it's either the farm, the home farm, or 60. And I think even since we're using this field as access, there's a meadow area. Didn't see that. I'm thinking we just buy 60. Because what we can do, like with here, technically we're going over to crop here, is, I don't know, something like on the lines off, get a plow, get a cheap old pl plow to lease. Because 6 meters is a bit too big for us, I think. I should be cut from here back onto the farm. Yeah, I don't know, something like a three or a five for a plow. Yeah, something like that. Five for a plow, two and a half meters wide. Long as it's wide enough for like the combine. Yeah, two meters should do it. Actually, what's the next one up? Unless we go with, was that a seven for? Three, six, seven. I think tractors on that. Maybe a bit too wide. It feels like a bang on three meter one would be perfect. But so either a two and a half or a three and a half. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. So what we can do is so any small rollers or mulchers and that. And there'd be a roller we need, not a mulcher. You know, just roll the ground up, smoothing it off. And then, just so you know, get some dirt, pile on top. And then be a little farm track for us. Maybe sprinkle some grass seeds on there for it to grow. And horse grease, <laughs> so. Right, uh, that's settled, horse grease to it, so that's what we're going to do. That's a nay in agreement. Or it could be a nay in disapproval, but I'm taking it as a nay of agreement. But yeah, also we've got the silage to sell. I don't think it's quite at its right price yet, because we have a look. Just to remind myself, so he yeah, has straw December and similar signage, it's December into January. 570 is the peak, and currently we can get 556 at the garden center. Yeah, and what? Let's wait another month, or in this case, two weeks. So, I think for now, we'll just whack the first spreader over here. So yeah, the plan now is rip up these grass fields. Also, if we can, in this episode, cedar there and mulcher there. Get 45 mulched since we've got to do on the other fields. And then seed it with rye. 
So I think the plan was, if we have the kind of crops, we're going to be buying 52, which is barley. Right, is that barley? Okay, that must be barley. That must be right then. That's going to be barley. And then, do we get these little fills over here? Sort of could do. But yeah, I knew pretty much all we have to do is buy 53, 60, and 58. All the 58 is going to be our oats for the horses. So you got wheat. Yeah, we're going to have barley here. Maybe you can convert 60 into an oat field and get 84. So then we've got our wheat, barley, and oats. That's going to be crop for the grain mill we we'll again. And rye, well, let's do we really want to do rye. Might as well do like wheat or barley or something. And this, let's actually just do alfalfa in this field. When is alfalfa ready to be planted? Ugh, April. So unless we do a cheeky grass field, get cut that. Or perhaps, actually, I know we can. Dang it, Mr. Plan made it for all seeds radish. Unless we're thinking. Actually, I'm thinking canola. I know we said about doing potatoes. So, unless we do canola on here. Has that just been harvested or has that been seeded? That's been seeded, so unless we say. With our loan, we're going to be getting. If we get these two fields. Yeah, pretty expensive though. Well, at least, certainly at least this one, maybe 91 even. Cause that's been seen as well, right? Have a big old canoe though. Get some Aussie rape. And then with that, we can make some delicious petrol. So I think there is a production for that. So if we go over here. Uh, no, not crude oil production. Not there quite yet. Yeah, fuel refinery. I'll go look at that. See if it's individually or separate. Or individually or as a group of you need bits of each to get to the one I know for sure I can just do it with OC rape is or is it two? There we go. No. I pass it. There we go. Midwest production. Get a refinery plant in. Obviously, it's going to be nowhere near the farm. It's going to be on a plot of land somewhere. Actually, what about how will that fit with our little area we've got? Oh, it's going to be too big, ain't it? Yeah, it's going to be way too big. Just the landscaping alone. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely annoying. If we move that over a bit, then perhaps... Unless we do that... Just reverse it in and then remove the silo. And move it somewhere else. But yeah, 80 grand. That class, individually that is. I know that for sure that's... Sorghum, corn, soybeans, add rapeseed oil, or rapeseed. And with that, we can get ethanol. And also, I think there's a corn mash and that. Or something along the lines, I can't remember what it is. But yeah, sir, we could do something like that. But, anyways, we need to start cultivating, rip up all these fields. Actually, is that the best coal bear we got slash can have? Because if we have a look. Okay, so that's 500 horsepower it needs. 
be under a disc arrow. 1.8 meters at the miles an hour. 360. Unless we try something else, you know. 400 horsepower for the Mandaco. Actually, what is our highest horsepower tractor? 325. And what's the other one? 360? Yeah. Ooh. But would it be worth it? Five and a half grand there. And what's a cheap large tractor? Tractor, because. Yeah, the reason I thought, oh, something different, experiments and all that. Unless we go with one of these. But the remaining needs to be over 360. That's going to be 20 grand in these synthes. Unless we try something like that. That's eight and a half grand for a 9620. It is articulated. Hmm. And that was my alarm going off, but uh, 20 grand we're looking at for something decent. Only what heck it was we'll stick with this, it's only gonna be slightly smaller and saving 20 grand on Lease and fees, and that's not including the hourly cost. That could be quite substantial and add up very quickly. But yeah, so yeah, I think we're sick with what we're doing. Rip up all the grass fields, especially as well. We can't direct drill with the cedar. And even if we could, it's good to have that. Cultivation, get the seabed sorted, make it easy for the crop to grow once it is actually seeded. In the ways we're sort of trying to do things, they're sort of semi realistic. And I do say semi because I know me, oh yeah, I know me very well, and yeah, may straight from the path, but I want to do the best I can stick to not using stupid equipment like we're doing on No Man's Land and by Spring, like by Spring. Last episode, that's not long went out, a couple of days ago. Plan on creating mega fields on that and yeah, it's just one of those things, it's okay we can get away with that, but we'll do it on every series to create the mega fields. Doing it wrong, or have big fields, I don't mind having big fields. Big fields are good, big fields are nice to have, but yeah, not ridiculous like mega fields that covers like half the map in that. Just a lot of little plots of land here and there, dotted about. Sure, why not? I need to move this out of the way, because that is in the way. Go. Oh, whack that over there. And what? Oh, forget. Just whack it there. I'll get hooked back to back up to the cultivator. I'll see now with the whole sort of self-reflection on fields and all that. I am actually thinking doing something. A sort of similar what I did with New Man's Land to start off with. Either I like, escalate very quickly to oh it's no longer a bigger challenge for thriving. Yeah that was with the help of productions and all that. Say what you want about productions but I think when they're managed in moderation they're good to have like with this series. Yeah we've got greenhouses, we've got the green mill in. I think yeah, apart from the fuel refinery, that's going to be something different, something I haven't retouched really on. I think that's the one I touched on the fuel refinery was 
Al Shuvin or something like that. Can't recall what it did on Comson Farms. Even though that is a map I'm planning to go back back to at some point. Depending on what maps come out in the future and out over the coming months, but certainly thinking about doing something like seeing what like sort of Dagwin's done with having like a kind of vintage survival or just vintage farming just together you know start off with a vintage tractor things like the basic sort of the plow cedar and pretty much that's it then things like the help with multiplayer we can have like a lease to own scheme I know on PC you can have the least of a mod, but fortunately consoles we don't have that option. And that's because it all changes the script of the games and that, and etc. And it's like Microsoft or Sony. From what I've heard before, it was Microsoft, but again, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Sony as well, or just Sony, that refuses the option to have scripted mods on games. Uh, anyways, <laughs> that's a bit of ranting on. But yeah, sort of the whole vintage survival. You know, just keep it in moderation, do little things here and there. Could be a good small, like a 20, 30 episode series. Heck, it may even grow more than 3 episodes. Something like vintage survival. You know, sort of start with basic equipment. And that could be like a season let's play series where we do vintage first of all and then we just build up and build up from that to over the years and decades perhaps have more mod equipment as you go down the year or so again that in the case of what year for a farm truck and that six is and that possible farming equipment I'm not sure on uh, things like, you need to plan for things like the basics of combine. The cut, the cut bars that we use often, they can get away with that. I'm trying to think as well. But yeah, it's like the cedars and planters and that. That's going to be the thing there. That's going to be the thing that will get us out. And there are things like plows and cold bears. There's so many of the classic ones. Like, kind of like the Polish ones, you know. Last thing as well was the map. Maybe an Eastern European vibe or Mediterranean, Italian. Doesn't have to be set in sort of prehistoric times of well, undeveloped Eastern Europe now. But yeah, three options about that. And I'm sort of saying that just because we have like no one's that. Just come off recording a 12 hour episode, which. The episode itself ain't 12 hours, I think it's like 50 minutes long at most. Did try to keep it short and did quite well until I sort of rammed in. Similar with this episode, perhaps, but. Yeah, so with that, we're at 46 episodes now, and. Yeah, I've got to do grapes on that series. But I think that alone is going to be like a year or so, so maybe 10 episodes there in groups together. By spring it's going to be a similar thing. What should we do to make a field in that with the potatoes? Court Farms is going to go for a while. Like, yeah, I know the market's flooded with Court Farms, so many people are interested. And yeah, I know certainly with the recent episodes that has been reflected, but I'm gonna keep on going with Court Farms, like, it's a freaking good map. Auction David, yeah, he's, just, he's one of those map makers who does awesome things. Other maps, yeah, hit and miss, depending on the map, map by map and the individual by individually. And ooh, we found a bale. Yeet. But yeah, 
seeing now. That's one thing also noticing the with bots now. It's like Nancy's Nancy Boy's American Force map. Twelve days I was testing, and that came back as failed. Which okay, fair enough, failed testing. But twelve days, really twelve days. When you look at other mods that have come on to the mod hub testing this and either passed or failed or whatever that came on later and were completely tested. Because yeah, I don't think it was a huge change that's pointed to American Falls. Pretty substantial, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, something about that, I think, personally, especially when you see other maps that's come down. Uh, some are alright, but some not are quite buggy in places. Um, not broken, but just buggy in general, and have gone through and released. Yeah, I don't know, but anyways, so I'm losing my voice. Look at these time maps, I'll get it all done. And I'll see you folks afterwards. There we go, that is the cultivating done. Didn't take us too long as I thought. But yep, yeah, all the grass fields have been ripped up and cultivated. Including 55, and the reason why I've done that is it's got so much silage in that, and so little cows. We don't really need a grass field dedicated for silage, we've got tons of silage. Got tons of straw in that. I have got plenty of hay at the moment, so I'm thinking, do we need it? Uh, not really. But further in the future, in the next year or two, we need some, then 
just quickly put the grass field down and be done with it. So we've got the cultivator coming down here attached to the gloss. We'll get that started on this. Yeah, mine's the gate. Actually, what? We'll shut that gate. There we go. So yeah, we're going to be mulching this field here and that field area by the grain mill. We'll also do that because I realise we haven't done that one yet and whilst we still remember, we can actually mulch it. All helps with that yield bonus, especially if these are going to be our rapeseed fields, then yeah, it will definitely come in handy, especially with the fuel production and yeah, even as I'm recording this, mods just dropped in that. Well, what dropped yesterday on Wednesday is Thursday now, recording this bit. Uh, yeah, some really nice new productions coming out. So I think, yeah, just some productions that are different rather than your same old. There's a variety. There we go, get cruise control one. But yeah, I think once we do the heads in that, we'll start going up and down. But yeah, we're just able to do that top speed. First, down here is the steepest. Once we get to this, it sort of levels out. There we go. Yeah, around Q8, 9 miles an hour. So yeah, it's just that little bit down there where it sort of semi struggles, but. Yeah, we're going to make light work of this, and I do think in the next episode we're going to have a lot of rolling to do. Obviously, things like this, mulching now, its process is a set that we can do now, get out of the way. And also, we do need to roll these grass fields here, because... They are stubble tillage, and even though we could just directly plant or see the crop and that in now with that, if we were going to plant, which we're not, not until next year, we do need to just roll it to get that seabed in. And again, that's the process of. Yeah, technically you don't need to do it. But if we're trying to be sort of semi-realistic with the whole farming process, then... Yeah, that's what we're going to need to do. And there we go, so back up, so get a bit up there we missed. And now we're just getting a worker on this. Well, we'll do the rolling, not the mulching ourselves, but get the workers start to cultivate. And I think we'll still get weeds popping up even when we do this, and that's fine. That is perfectly fine for us. There we go, so we'll go. Yeah, hopefully. We should be able to see ahead of the cultivator because we're twice as wide and only going slightly slower. So, obviously, it's just going to do yeah, it's going to do that. So hit the tree, please. Even though you're used in that, I don't want to go and replace you. Well, not just yet at least, but. <laughs> but anyways, we'll get the rest of the mulching done, and I'll see you folks afterwards.
And there we go, as we're working into the sunset. Yeah, I actually had a uh, month set to July for the thumbnail and and <laughs> completely forgot to leave it on because I had a break between recording off the not time lapse just gone, but the one before I had recording this bit now and yeah, I just completely forgot so well, my bad on that. But yeah, as you can see, we are now starting the process of rolling these fields with the field roller to get that seed bed. And it's going to be an extra set that helps us with the planting of the seeds, make sure the seeds go into the ground, and make sure it's like a perfectly smooth and level surface. So currently we've got the worker doing the field by the green mill. It has missed a spot to the right there, but overall I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, I'm not sure why it missed it. They did it with the mulching. That's why we quickly did it in time lapse of moving it, moving over around. Get that last little bit done. But yeah, these trees, these pesky trees are in the way. Ugh, come on. I was about moving a 20 meter bloody mulcher. There we go. That's why I want to see. But yeah, so if we have a look now at the field map, get the sub tillage popping up, I will see a difference. So the darker one is the tillage. There we go. And that is the seabed. And that's what we want for our crops to go in. Technically, we did do it with the wheat and that, so that's going to impact the yield by at least 5% of the missed processes of getting that perfect seabed in. And that's the thing, 5% may not seem much. However, when we're running this farming act, this, remember, this is our first year running the farm. We need every single penny coming as possible. We're still going to be doing contract work, still going to be that contractor to help out local farmers. But we need to focus on ourselves as well, our own farm as well. The contract is, rather than being the main business, it's now, yeah, it's a slight, slight business. Or part of a dual main purpose of business. Dual main purpose business, whatever. So yeah, it's like a bit of yin and yang. It all comes in hand in hand, both ways. And yeah, that's the thing. Because things like we need to purchase a baiter and a wrapper and that for the contract work. Yeah, we got the forge wagon for ourselves, but for things like doing the hay and that or straw, I'd rather bait it. Have we just remind ourselves on the prices of the baiters? For the bigger ones, we're looking at. 150 grand and for the wrappers we're looking at 54 grand so that's 200 grand there and 5% especially with things like fill beans that can make a difference because yeah the question is how much fill beans did we get in the end actually was it something like 56,000 liters or something we got so yeah, five percent of sixty thousand liters. So five percent of that is three thousand liters. So that's twelve grand there. Okay, all right. I could just do a cheeky contract of signage. And yeah, I'll be at twelve grand back. And perhaps I could get twelve grand quicker by doing these contracts than doing the process of correctly mulching the fields, rolling the fields, creating that seabed before we put the crop in, but yeah, but that's not sort of what you would do in real life almost, ain't it, kind of thing. That's the thing, yeah, I'm not a real farmer, I'm just a huge Uber and that, and yeah, what I do for a living now is back into care now as a care assistant, but that's the thing with the whole Farm Simulator franchise, when I first bought FS19 
when it was free on the PS Store back in 2020, I think it was. Yeah, got to be 2020. Bought it in like June or July, whenever it popped up free. Didn't bother it for a few months. Then I got bored with sim racing due to a variety of issues, the quality of the races and that. And sort of the dedication of have to put time in, sort of sweat. Yeah, pretty much. I was a good old sweater, sim racer off. For the grace, I'll put maybe 10 hours in over Saturday and Sunday. When racing on Sunday, I'll put about 10 12 hours in of practice, practice racing, just hammering out to get the perfect lap times. And yeah, discover farm sim then. That's why, like, this channel recently hit its anniversary now, I didn't realise. Yeah, I've certainly come the long way. And I don't want to go back into doing a variety of videos, grow the channel and that. Rather than just doing Let's Play videos here and there. I want to do proper videos and that, like some guides. I've got some ideas, I've been thinking about it recently. I've looked at what well, like, sort of Mr. CP. Driver 53 Gaming has put out and what they haven't put out and I've got some ideas especially when we'll get back into it, mod reviews I know for me personally if I want to go for a mod review I'll watch Miss CDP's videos because well, with all due respect to like sort of like DJ Goham and others Miss CP is one of those creators I prefer to go to when I want to watch my mod reviews. And that's one of the things I'm going to take reflect on when I do my own mod reviews. Do a little bit of in-depth analysis of each mod, rather than being that sort of glossy over loud mouth, not loud mouth in a bad way, but I know certain people in the community aren't as fan of like the likes of like people like DJ Gomes' videos and his mod reviews. Which is fair enough, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I do watch this plays and that from time to time. Especially as Farms and News, I tend to watch that every day whenever it comes out. But yeah, with things like that, at the end of the day, it's a personal thing. So it's all about a personal perspective. Yeah, we are seriously losing the light now. we maybe got another half an hour or so of light. I think we don't need to work late into the night, and as well for recording, as I mentioned before. Yeah, it ain't great recording at night. That's why I tend to avoid it where I can. But when you get only like, like five hours of work in per week or per day, yeah. Working into dusk and or working from dusk to dawn is part of it. But anyway, so that is well, pretty much all is done. I've got a bit over there to do. I've got this bit here to finish off. I'll get these little bits here finished off in between episodes. And uh, we've done the first field of rolling. Now we've got to roll 54, 106. 107, 55, 56, 57, 59, 109, 45, and this field. <laughs> oh, but it ain't gonna take us too long. Also, we've got the slide to sell soon. It's almost at its peak price when it hits December or January. That's when we'll sell. But, anyways, that's where we're gonna leave it today. As always, hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, smash that button. Feel free to comment down below. If you want to share some, please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider. But for just to do, I hope you're nice day. But for now, this will be Farmer and Stream. And I'll see you all very soon.